one of the things that I find it difficult to kind of pass from videos and reviews and this sort of stuff, you kind of think like, is this guitar the best thing ever? Or is this kind of a good thing in its price range? Like, where does this guitar really fit in terms of like the scale of bad to good? Um, I think when it comes to the Sire guitars, you occasionally read some things that are potentially a little bit shocking, like, oh, this beats my Gibson equivalent or, or something like that. So for me personally, I'd say that these are above the playability of something like an Epiphone. I think maybe they might beat the odd Gibson even, but I think, you know, you'd probably notice the difference when you compare these two very expensive guitars, I'd suggest. And particularly if you look at them up close, that's where I think it's most obvious that these aren't necessarily premium quality instruments. Now that's not to say that there's anything bad there, it's just that those are some of the areas where when you pay more money for a guitar, whether it's a Gibson on the headstock or Fender or whatever, there are things like attention to detail which they generally don't miss, although it might be fair to say that Gibson do sometimes miss. But let me know, are you one of these people that does rate the Sire stuff so highly that you sold some of your Gibson equivalents or your Fender equivalents or whatever? I certainly think it. this stuff holds up with anything in the price range up to about £1,000. Above that price range there are brands like Tokai, the Japanese Tokai stuff, which I think never really misses and kind of is really good quality stuff, but that's probably two or three times the price of this. Epiphone, I would suggest, I don't find personally that they've been as playable in my experience as the Sire stuff, but if your opinion differs, please share in the comments. It's just interesting to get some kind of flavours from other people. So on with the video, but that's just a kind of thing I wanted to put up at the front. It's, I don't think these are going to make you instantly sell a Gibson, but they definitely have a place, I think, for the, the working musician, for the intermediate to uh, a player who doesn't necessarily use this type of guitar all the time but wants something similar, um, you know, I feel like these definitely have a place in most guitar people's arsenals. Arse. So I haven't, I think, played a sire on the channel for a while, so I wanted to kind of do a little bit of an overview about what I think it is that you should expect when buying a new Sire guitar. So I've got a bunch of these things, uh, a few of them I bought because I was interested in how the Sire guitars actually were in real life after seeing some of the reviews of them, um, which were of course quite favourable because a lot of the reviews were from shops that were selling them. I came across Sire guitars because I had a Sire bass, the uh, Marcus Miller V7 5 string, which I'm really impressed with and that's a great bass for me personally. Since then, I emailed back and forth with Sire a bit and they've sent me one or two guitars, three or four, something like that anyway. But this one here was one that they made specifically for me and um, then the white telly i bought one of these and they also sent me one of these and also the other sire vintage so you couldn't necessarily call me totally impartial but i'm going to be honest here about my experience with them and talk to you about them in a serious way so thing is these guitars range from about four to 550 pounds i think oh i've also got this one which i bought because i want something to scratch that 335 itch what i found with all of the guitars that i've played is that i've not had to do anything to them out of the box to get them to a playable condition which is you know this price range you probably will find things quite variable with other brands for sure you know like if you picked up seven squires or something you know i think you'd probably find that there'd be a few there with fret sprout or rough fret edges or you know little issues the thing that sire really seemed to get right in my opinion is the spec on these things so you've got locking tuners and you've got pickups that can do the job you know they're not necessarily mind blowing or anything but they don't need upgrading either instantly <laughs> and they're just good fun to play and i've said before i think the necks on these things generally for me are exactly what i'd look for in a the neck they're like a comfortable thickness not on the skinny side you know so something like a squire classic vibe for me i've always found them a little bit too skinny whereas these larry carlton ones they're all 
I would say medium kind of C feeling. The other cool thing is that as you run your hand up and down, you don't feel the fretages because they're rolled at the factory and stuff. The areas that I think also they get things right, you know, like satin neck on the back of the Les Paul, I think that's a really good thing. A couple of choices that I don't think are necessarily so cool. We've got a kind of glossy looking fretboard on the strap type guitars and tellies, which you don't actually feel under your finger, which is a good thing I think it actually just feels super smooth to play but when you've got a satin back of the neck I feel like it's a slightly odd choice still I think that's the case and I think a lot of people might agree with that the other really cool thing that they got going on most of the models except for the ES335 has this kind of uh, decent upper fret access you know so like that's lifted from a Sir and actually Sir made Les Paul didn't they was it can't remember what it's called, but they've got a Les Paul which looks roughly like that in the join. Some cool little tweaks there to the designs. But yeah, generally what you find is that straight out of the box, for me, I've been able to play these things and not had to go and make alterations to the intonation or anything. And I've not found kind of high frets or things like that. And let me know in the comments if you have found those things, because I think it's important to be open and honest about issues that we have found. I wouldn't want you to buy a sire and be super disappointed and not have a voice to say that. So feel free to use those comments for that kind of thing. I have done another video where I was concerned that they have become a bit overzealous in terms of the fret rolling, where you'd find that the bevel of this kind of fret edge was starting to creep up towards the string. So you could get quite easily roll your, your kind of E string off of the frets in general. <laughs> I did feed that back to Sire and hopefully they've um, started to make that less pronounced because there's really no need to bevel that too close to the edge and yeah the risk is I think not worth the reward. The other kind of thing that I'd suggest to not necessarily have super high expectations about would be the tidiness of the kind of finishing overall. So I think David Beebe has got his hands on one of these as well and he had sort of the same kind of thoughts where you're not necessarily going to be getting a, an instrument that looks super super perfect you know so that some of the binding there might be like little tooling marks on it or you know there might be slight finish imperfections but at this kind of price range if you get one that plays well which I think most of mine I would say definitely do I think for me it's more important that the guitar plays and sounds good than you know there's no little imperfections or anything so things like the nuts potentially look a little bit high sometimes you know some of the binding is not necessarily the tidiest work in the world but at this price range for me i'm not necessarily too fussy about that kind of thing but if you are i think it's important that someone tells you that so that you could be on the lookout for those kind of things particularly on this white one here Close up, I'd say the binding is not, it's not bad, but, you know, if you were expecting sort of Gibson custom shop quality, then maybe you'd be a little bit upset. But, you know, I do read people that say that they got on with their size so well that it kind of, they stand up to guitars three or four times the price. That's, you know, up to those guys to say. But I would say the area where you start to see the price differential is not really playability or uh, how it, is as an instrument but more to do with these kind of finishing aspects which I think are probably slightly less important for me anyway as a, a player. For the kind of jobs that I'm doing with these things I think these are ideal kind of gigging instruments you know if you've got a Les Paul for instance and you're thinking right well I've got to play this dodgy gig at a pub in the middle of nowhere do you really want to take a, a sort of two three thousand pound instrument or do you want to play something that feels really good to play looks the business but if it you know got nicked or damaged it's not the end of the world in the same kind of way you know a sire gold top is a cool instrument it's 500 pounds this is the sort of thing i could take to a gig as a backup or gig it you know and put it in the car with a bunch of other stuff and i'm not necessarily gonna have to baby it or be too worried about what happens to it at the gig in the same way that if i took a prs or a gibson les paul i'm going to be kind of always thinking about that frail headstock potentially also you know things can happen on gigs which you don't expect 
and it would be really upsetting if anything happened to an expensive guitar in that moment. Likewise, something specialist like the 335, to get an instrument of this kind of quality, I feel like to, to, to play in all of that stuff, like the, the size stuff is a step above Epiphone, in my opinion, unless potentially you're talking about some of the Memphis made Epiphones, but you know, I wouldn't say that this is like a Gibson quality ES335 based on my experience with Gibsons, but it is a very comfortable feeling instrument. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> comfortable to play and it's the sort of thing again like I say that you could take to a gig and not be too kind of worried about what might happen to that guitar and you know especially given you know Larry Colton's previous Gibson kind of signature model would have been the sort of thing that you would be worried about because I think those were sort of three four grand kind of instruments this thing Larry does actually gig them which is of course sort of semi surprising I feel um, but you know a 500 pound instrument opinion holds up and is a bit more playable than something like an Epiphone again let me know your opinion in the comments if you've had different experiences to that but you know something like a Peerless would be a, a cool option in this kind of price range maybe a bit above that overall solid guitars that you don't really have to do too much to or anything to to, to gig with them if you were looking to gig them and I'd recommend these as well for someone sort of like intermediate or above looking for their kind of next guitar once they've got out of that kind of beginner phase. Something that could take you from kind of that beginner to serious guitarist kind of phase where maybe at that point you start thinking about, oh, well, I've got this kind of specialist thing that I want to be doing. Maybe I'd look at other guitars then. But so those are my kind of downsides would be potentially the finishes are not pristine or perfect you know like the sort of thing that you might get on a two thousand pound guitar but they do play really well they do sound good and i think the necks for me are quite comfortable some people i read find this neck a little bit narrow i've not found that to be the case um but in general decent guitars a very competitive price and at this price range i can't really think of anything that beats it i think people are quite high on the Harley Benton Pro Fusion stuff, maybe that's worth a look. Um, also, I think people have been recently quite high on jet guitars, maybe also worth a look. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Let me know your experiences with side guitars in the comments. I'm going to throw this away. Cheers. Cheers.